Hey friends, just stepped in poop. Out here with my milk cow and my young milk cow and a young bull who often decides to be a bit of a jerk. So we'll see if he behaves. Got myself a nice raw milk chai latte. Hi, Mossy. And we're gonna answer some questions that you guys asked on Instagram about milk cows. These are in no particular order. Cows are just pooping in the background, you know. I'm answering them just in the order that I got them. So, number one, thoughts on an electric milker. If you, so I'm not gonna say don't get an electric milker. I'm just gonna say don't jump to getting one unless you have like carpal tunnel or tendonitis or you're like things like that, then it might be a good plan. Um, if you have two milking cows and you're the only milker, I definitely think a milking machine's a good idea. Um, I honestly think you shouldn't get a milking cow unless you have someone else who can also milk the cow. It really is a huge burden to be the only milker in a family. Have you ever trained a new cow and tips for the process? So only once did we go about trying to train a new milk cow and we didn't really do it very well. And um, it ended badly with um, Marius breaking his hand because the cow stomped his hand. And I was really pregnant with Freya and we ended up just selling the cow. If I were doing it again, which I am, because Jessa who's laying down calves in October to December, she's really a chill cow though, we're really fortunate. But um, bring them into the stanchion on a regular basis. Brush them down, get them used to being handled, all that sort of thing. Don't touch their udder because you don't want them to, um, like you don't want to introduce bacteria there. They have plugs in the ends of their teats. And um, you guys are just really enjoying yourself back there. <laughs> but definitely just get used to being <laughs> Get them used to being handled. Also, get yourself a kick bar. Whether you're starting with a new milker or not, I think a kick bar, which um, I've showed before, but it goes like right here on a cow, and it then it goes over their spine, and it just like hits a reflex, and it slows them or stops them from kicking, and I highly recommend having one. They're an inexpensive tool. We tried it with a rope once, because we were told you could do it with a rope, and it worked for me, but then Marius tried it and um, he put the rope in the wrong spot and he, the cow, it like, the cow fell over on him while he was milking. So he said to tell you that if you do decide to try the rope, make sure you're putting it in the right spot so you don't have a cow fall over on you. What do you wish you could tell your newbie self? I'd say don't rush into buying a cow shop around and don't look for a deal buy a good cow buy one that's got a clean health record if you're wanting to hand milk it's got big enough teats um buy one that's bred and if they say it's bred you need to have a vet record or a blood test record that it's actually pregnant because too many times people get burned i've been burned by this myself they tell you the cow is bred because it didn't go back into heat but maybe it didn't go back into heat because they just didn't see or because it had cysts on her ovaries, which is what we had. And yeah, you want to make sure they're confirmed bread. Does milk have to be pasteurized and what's the difference between raw and pasteurized? There is people who have home milk cows who pasteurize their own milk, but for the most part, if you're getting a milk cow, you're wanting to consume raw dairy. Raw dairy still has all the beneficial enzymes that help you be able to digest dairy and pasteurized dairy does not have those enzymes which is why so many people have problems with it and a lot of people who have problems with dairy we're just getting all the bodily functions here thank you cows a lot of people have problems with pasteurized dairy like myself and my daughters can handle raw dairy just fine the dual purpose guernsey i have no experience with guernseys if I came across a good Guernsey, local-ish to us, I would buy it in a heartbeat. However, there's not a lot of genetic diversity for Guernseys around here. You, and um, 
So that was, I asked a Jersey farmer, like, have you ever thought about Guernseys? And he said, there just isn't genetic diversity without going to like a whole lot of effort. So he just hasn't bothered. Recommendations for small homestead and no pasture. So there's a few questions along those lines, like how much land do I need? How much pasture do I need? That sort of thing. What sort of space do I need for a cow? You can have a milk cow with no pasture as long as you're willing to feed them hay year round. So look at what your hay costs are. Look at, can you store a year's worth of hay? Or is there somewhere where you can buy a year's worth of hay and they store it for you? Or somewhere where you can buy hay every couple months as you need it? Or, you know, like that sort of things. Look at that. Um, cows don't need like a fancy barn. They just need somewhere out of the wind and out of the weather if they need. So it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a three-sided shed. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. We have to feed hay to cows. Um, I think the math is 210 days a year and the rest of the year we can graze. So you have to be willing to pay for the hay, which for us, if we had to pay for hay, so we're pretty harsh winter. And one math that's pretty interesting and I think reliable for how much hay you need for a cow is they're gonna eat their weight in hay, a milk cow, this isn't for beef cows. A milk cow's gonna eat their weight in hay a month. So Mossy's about 900 to 1,000 pounds. So count on 1,000 pounds of hay a month, which those big round bales, um, some of them are 800 pounds, some of them are 1,200 pounds. It depends on your area. So one of those big round bales a month. For us, hay is about 10 cents a pound. So 1,000 pounds of hay is $100. So we're gonna count on $100. I'm in Canada, Northern Canada. $100 of hay a month to feed a milk cow. Now, when a cow's dry, this kind of sucks because you're putting her through and she's not giving you anything for a couple months. But when a cow is fresh, $100 in hay plus grain, and Mossy's giving us six gallons of milk a day, so times 30 days is 180 gallons. 180 gallons? 180 gallons of milk a month for $100 of hay plus grain. I'd say that's a pretty good deal. When you break it down like that, it doesn't feel so crazy. Look at Jessa. Let's go see Jessa. She's really pregnant. Hi, Jessa girl. How you doing? Look at your big pregnant belly. Oh, yeah. And your itty bitty udder. Yeah. You're so pregnant. However, let's put this down for a second. Somewhere safe. Her pins right here are still like straight across and firm and her udder's not even close. So we know she's got a while still. She's just feeling it. And I've been trying to bump and feel a baby, but haven't felt anything yet. She's a heifer. She's never had a calf before. And she, she is just the sweetest. You know what? I'm just gonna close this so then I don't have to deal with the bull. And we could just film this with Jessa. There's a chicken loose in here hanging out with the cows. So, next question is how do you know when the milk is bad or has something wrong with it? So, if you have done proper handling of the milk, which I have a whole YouTube video, I'll link all those videos on how we handle raw milk. And if you, um, Oh, are you gonna get up now? Maybe. Um, you know your cow is healthy. She's good. If you're in a place where you need to do testing on your cow, you did that testing. I'm not really familiar with it because we're not really in an area where we need to do that testing. But um, milk will smell bad if it's bad. Or if your milk, like your milk should last well over a week. And if it starts going bad after a few days, then something's wrong with your milk. Maybe it's your milk handling, maybe you're not cleaning your equipment well enough, your jars or whatever, or maybe it's that um, your cow has something wrong with her. How do we do it with kids? When I first had milk cows, um, kids got packed along in strollers and car seats and strapped in 
you know, a bumbo seat and Hamish screamed while I milked the cow and it just was what it was. Um, or I'd have them on my back or whatever. I bet you're going to poop now, so I should probably move so I don't get pooped on. Are you going to walk away from me? <laughs> There's a cow signed in. Um, now my kids are old enough that I can leave them inside. Let's shift here so we don't see that. And I can go milk. I now have a fly in my chai latte. It's okay. It's just like a little tiny fly, not like a big black one, and I'm still gonna eat, drink my chai. Would you recommend getting a cow before or after having kids? So if it's just two of you, if you can sell raw milk where you are and you would like to sell raw milk, then by all means get a cow and sell raw milk, sell the extra. If you're a small family and you have a high producing cow, it might take you a lot to go, it, like you're gonna need pigs or chickens or something to feed extra milk too. As for after having kids, I mean, I wouldn't get one, like if we're talking about pregnancy, pregnancy and newborn is hard with a milk cow and you really need to have another milker. Um, <laughs> does, it, does milking need to be exactly at the same time every day, like 7 a.m., 7 p.m.? In my experience, cows don't need you to milk at the exact same time every day so much as they need you to milk in the exact same routine every day. So like this morning, Marius fell back asleep after his alarm and didn't milk until 7.45 instead of 7. And the cows are just fine. As long as you milk in the exact same routine, you bring them in, you brush them down, you wash them, you milk them, you put them out, you grain them. That's our routine. As long as you're milking that same routine, they're gonna be happy. What do I do when my cow is dry, sad face, crying, crying, crying face? This is why people end up with two milk cows. <laughs> um, you try and time that dry period so that you can go away. That's another thing that people do. Um, try and make all the dairy products you can. Some people freeze milk. Um, it's not recommended by the USDA to can milk, but some people pressure can milk. Um, is it, you know, could you find a friend who also has a milk cow that you could trade that maybe like when your cow is dry, she gives you milk and when their cow is dry, you give them milk? Could you figure out something like that? Or um, could you, is there somewhere you could buy raw milk for the meantime? Sometimes it just means you have to buy store-bought dairy. Oh, Jessa, maybe I should get up. Hey, girl. How do you know that something's not right with your cow? So if your cow, you're gonna know, she's either gonna be really touchy to milk, like if something's up with her udder. Um, I go through a lot in the how to handle milk about straining milk and checking the strainer. Um, <laughs> she's gonna look sick. All this grass out here makes my nose itchy. She's gonna look sad. If your cow's not right, oh, she's gonna poop right by me or pee right by me here. Charming. But I don't even move. You're gonna know that something's not right with your cow. You have a daily relationship with them and you're gonna realize that something is up. How do you start a first time milker? Okay, I answered that. And do I need a stanchion? I think a stanchion and a designated milking space is a really good thing. Um, especially if you're training a first time cow, it just really stops them like stepping back and forward. Like when you just have them tied on a halter, they like to like step one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. Like they like to go back and forth and it's really frustrating because you're constantly moving the bucket. So a stanchion really cuts down on how much they can move. How long does it take to hand milk? This really depends on the cow because every cow's milk flows at a different rate. If you're buying a cow from a dairy, actually from anywhere, ask them what the cow's milk flow is like. Um, you know, like on in a dairy, unless they lie to you, those people know like this cow's super fast to milk out, even though it's on a machine and you're gonna be hand milking, or this cow takes forever to milk, at, milk out, unless they lie to you about it, they know. 
They just do. Milking in went winter. Not really a question, but how it's different in comparison kind of thing. So milking in winter is almost nicer than milking when it's really stupid hot out. Because the cow's cozy and you can lean up against the cow for warmth. Below minus 35, like I'm talking Celsius, but minus 35 is about where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet up. That's when you, like the backs of your hands get really cold while you're milking. Like minus 20 is which is like zero degrees Fahrenheit, still very decent. Um, you gotta keep water thawed and that sort of thing. But the actual milking, it's cozy, it's fine. Minus 35, the froth on your milk starts to freeze before you get inside. How on earth do you grate homemade mozzarella? It's so difficult, it's gotta be cold. And if you're doing full fat mozzarella, it's not gonna grate well, but if you do you skim the cream and then make mozzarella, it's firmer and it will grate wet better. How do you get started? I've always wanted a milking cow. I'm gonna direct you to my uh, another milk cow video. I forget what it's called. Maybe it's called, so do you wanna buy a milk cow? Maybe not. I'll link it there. How to care for cows. Cows are basic and complicated at the same time. They need good feed and water and somewhere out of the wind. That's the basics of it. Can you provide that? Then you can figure the rest out. How long until you need to put the milk in the fridge? So some people do, they put the milk in the freezer first for an hour. I've never done that. That just sounds like me exploding milk jars on a regular basis. If you want your milk to last two weeks, not a week, then you do need to speed chill it in the freezer or on ice, but I, if I had two weeks worth of milk, um, I would need like five freezers. Like we can fit two days worth of milk in the fridge. Jessa. Jessa, can I finish this please? Um, I, if you were selling milk and you wanted milk to last forever, that's one thing. But for us, just straight into the fridge works. And it lasts a good week. Okay, girl. No. Get. Get. You're fine. Should we bring you in and try and bump your calf? I think we should. I have a video on calf bumping, but let's see if we can do it again here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hi, you. Get away from my camera. Jessa has been, we've been slowly working on getting her used to the stanchion, bringing her in here. And this is the first time she's just walked in and put her head right in, so that's really good. Um, I have a better video on this and I don't have a tripod out here, so it's hard to kind of show you. But basically, um, when you look at a cow, this is their driver's side, this is their passenger side. Left, lunch, so this is her rumen. And right, runt. So if they're pregnant, this is where their baby is. So the ribs go down and you'll see where the ribs end, like you can feel it. So in this area here, you're gonna press, this is called calf bumping. Some people do it with the fist. I like it with my hand better. And then you feel to see if you can feel a calf bump back. By the time they're seven months pregnant, you can feel a calf bump back. So I need to put my camera down here and see if I can feel this. I can't feel anything here. So we don't think she's due before the end of October, but if I could feel a calf right now, that would mean she would be due by mid-October. So we decided we would just start bumping her regularly to kind of get an idea on when we could feel a calf. Yeah, can't feel anything. So I think it's important to brush 
their legs, get their legs used to being touched and the inside of their legs too and their belly. So some would put grain in, like if you, if you have a cow that really, really doesn't want to come in the stanchion, you can use grain, but we prefer to train them to not need grain for milking time. So I won't give Jessa grain in here. She knows that grain is an after milking time treat because she gets it too, along with Mossy and Jeffy. Good girl, Jessa. And the last thing is that um, she's in a good mood. She's not trying to get out. Um, you don't want to let them out when they're trying to get out. Let them out when everything is calm. Positive reinfor reinforcement. If they're trying to get out, you don't let them out unless it's a dangerous situation and they need to get out or they're gonna hurt themselves. Um, you want them to be calm when you let them out so they know that only when they're well behaved do they let, get let out.